Crown fans, we are here after game two of Numbers vs. Big Boy, where Numbers won by Chrono Bomb Shenanigans. Yeah, that's bizarre. I know that sounds weird. He won by Chrono Bomb. Chrono Bomb wins the day, and this is after the fix to avoid the Chrono Frag issues. But my point is, he won. Well done to Numbers. So. Game, or match two is going to be between Sahanam and Shalka. Now, unfortunately, neither one gave me the replays for their game, but this is it was played rather recently, and like I said, this is the first time back after a long hiatus, so there's going to be some organizational issues. Now, of course, in Season 3, that's going to be out of the question because of the money tournament issue, but for Season 2, I don't care so much because it isn't a money tournament. I do want it to be as professional as possible, but it's not, technically speaking, professional yet. So... That being said, Stahanam and Shalka each won one game. So, game three was played, and I actually frapsed it, so we're going to be watching that. And, just so you know, I frapsed it, but I didn't do a recording of audio at the time. So, let's start that up. So this is on Withering Dunes. It is, well, obviously between the two of them. Let's see, I need to get this big, and oh, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. Actually... So, Withering Dunes is a fairly small map. It's the smallest map in the tournament map pool. I believe it's 200 by 200, and most of the maps are 256 by 256. Though that's not that much smaller, really. Most of the newer maps that I've been building are 320 by 320, which is considerably larger. And Shalka is playing CISO, Sahanov is playing Vekir, although Shalka being Shalka, it should be more precisely said, Akron says Shalka is playing CISO because Shalka always picks random. So, Shalka in this match has been, play has been picked to play CISO, with, I guess, Sahana's Vekir. So, both players going for economy builds. Shalka going for heavy QP, though. That is unusual. I I don't really ever see people go heavy QP on anything. I'm really curious what he's going to do with that, because that is bizarre. Most players will go for heavy LC and maybe light on QP, but sometimes one could be like... Stakhanov right now is doing what most players will do, which is heavy LC and then focus a bit more on QP once you have a good LC base, because you need LC to build RPs and then work from there. But Shalka is going heavily for QP, and I'm really curious what he's planning on doing with that, because he's got to have a plan with that. I mean, you wouldn't just drop three RPs on QP. That's 150 LC. That's not being used to get more LC. So there's got to be a good reason for that. I'm curious what he's planning on going for. He's going for really high tech quickly, if he's going for chrono porting, or what. But it's going to be rather interesting. Well, Sahanov is getting a very fast depot at 220 mark. He's getting a very fast depot and likely to get very fast vehicles as well. His test beer has spotted Shalka, knows what Shalka is doing, how he's playing. And, of course, Shalka has not yet scouted, at least Shalka has scouted back when he is, but that hasn't propagated towards the future. Anyway, back when he is, he is actually not scouting. His SOP is going to the near expansion, nearest expansion to Sakhanov, but isn't going any further at this point. This is at the 140 mark, it probably will be going, in, for future, it'll be going, but Shalka is actually 20 seconds ahead of me right now. No, he's 5 seconds ahead of me, but the SOP has still not moved, while... Nothing's really changed in Sakhanov's base. Sakhanov is probably going to be echoing back those scouts fairly soon, but he won't be... Okay, so he did... Well, he actually didn't undo the QPRPs. No, he's he's kept the QPRPs, but he has built more LCRPs. It just looks like he's just a matter of order. Like I said, rather odd, though, because he really doesn't need all that much QP at first. He really needs to have LC. Although he is... Oh, I see. He's going for Lancers. That would make sense, because Lancers are very QP-heavy, though even then, one QPRP, maybe two if you're going really heavy on Lancers, should do it. Three QPRPs would probably be a bit excessive, though. Given his resource count, it looks like it actually paid off. He has 40 QP and zero LC... Oh, sorry, 39. This is after billing. No, he did cancel it. Sorry. Sorry, Ice Channel was pointing out that he canceled it. He, they are right. He did cancel that. So both players are going for the standard LC first, then QP. So Shaka is definitely going for Lancers which is a very common thing for him to do. He very much loves Lancers, but he's doing it in a slightly more sensible way, having LC first, then QP, because QP is sort of the high-tech resource. It'd be, if anyone here play, if anyone's watching play StarCraft, it'd be very much like getting gas at six. Like, at, at six food, getting gas. That wouldn't make any sense. That applies to both StarCraft Brood War and StarCraft II. Like that, roughly that timing. But, I know they're not the same timings, but for Akron, that's basically where it would fit in. So... Since Shaka has shifted back to more standard build, both players aren't really doing anything out of the ordinary. At this point, it's very standard. Both players are just going, building up their tech, building up their RPs. Although an importer is being built for Shaka right next to his, one of his tunnels to his base. 
which is not a bad idea, though importers are quite weak. I would, if he's planning on just building a cheap structure there, suggest putting a comm center there. Because they're cheap, they have huge vision range, and they're about twice as tough as importers. But he has chosen for an importer, which could be a big risk. Anyway, the Lancer's coming in, attacking the South Key PRPs, and Zion Turcher has come in to stop it. Though, one other Lancer will be coming in to assist. And the Lancer doesn't really care. Lancers tend to just go, oh, well, any unit really just tends to go for RPs one at a time, try to close them up, not really worry about killing them. And the Lancer's actually been moved further in the future, about 30 seconds later, will be moved up to the north side, but I don't know if he's actually going to do that. We'll see what the blue time wave comes through, what changes, because it looks like the Zion Trigger will kill the Lancer. The Lancer is dead. The Lancer will not survive to go to the north side, but the second Lancer appears to be the one that went off to the north to actually attack the LCRPs. And yes, it is. It's going towards the north, while another Lancer is being built in the factory, and a, a Zion Beer can... What else? Walking around the base. It's going to likely become another vehicle of its own, though Zion Trigger Save the day, very handy. Lancers, until aerospace is upgraded, are not particularly good against ground. That being said, Zion Turchers are cloaked, so it's a moot point. It won't be able to see it anyway. Regardless, the Lancer isn't great against ground, even if it could see the Zion Turcher, until aerospace is upgraded. Then its firing rate just doubles, and it becomes awesome against ground. So, second Lancer is coming in from the north, and we're at the 333 mark. And like I said, it's about the 350 mark that that Lancer actually started attacking, which is roughly when Shaka is focused. Shaka is building another importer. He's building a lot of importers, which isn't surprising given he is going heavily for Lancers, though I would be surprised if he doesn't build another factory sometime soon. Also scouting out the north expansion, making sure that Stakhanov hasn't put anything there yet. He has two factories. Never mind. Okay, so he does have two factories, which is good, because that is going to allow him to use up those resources effectively. Especially the importers. Or sorry, the reserves. He shouldn't have too many of those in stock. Obviously, you want to float a little bit in case your opponent tries to undermine you, but having too many reserves is a bit annoying, since that's usually the bottleneck resource for CISO in a lot of cases. Unless, of course, they get way too many, which generally is what happens in practice. So, what... So, we see how Sakhanov is sending in his Zion Turcher to scout up by attack, making sure that this one base here, that near base, is free first, and then continuing to attack. Sop has moved back from there, and now it is teleporting in, so the Zion Church is teleporting in to harass, and of course, no detectors around here. The Sop, not sure where it moved back to, or, but it isn't here. The Lancer is being attacked by the Zion Church, the Zion Church is not going for the RPs. Probably a bad idea, because, although, actually, no, I was going to say, because, it's, yeah, Sakhanov doesn't have the resources. Shalka actually does have resources, so Sakhanov is more vulnerable to the harassment than Shalka is, though, at the 445 mark, no, that's still true. He is definitely building up there. He is definitely vulnerable. And he's got Halkian class and specials. To point that out, he's getting a Zion Halkian at about the five minute or yeah, about the five minute mark. And this is something that kind of does sometimes, but it's something of a signature strategy of his anyway, is to get very early Zion Halkian and then use that to calm jam his opponents. So that's probably what he's gonna do, and at this point in the game, it'll be very effective. He has a Zion Halkian, he is, however, focused about a minute before the Zion Halkian comes out. At about the Actually, it's about the five minute mark. We see the Zion Lancer's coming in from Shalka. Three Lancers now. He is definitely beefing up the Lancer count. Probably quite worried about getting attacked, but Teth Pulsar coming in from the depot as well, and there it is. Teth Pulsar will be able to help out with those Lancers. And another Lancer, still in the main base, not seeing that, that Zion Turcher, and Shalka has not gone to deal with it yet. Mech is building a Macrofab, which will be very useful, because then, well, see, Calm Jam is a status effect, and like all status effects, can be recovered by frigates, MFBs, and I think special no special ops can't recover it, but frigates and MFBs can. Frigates and MFBs are both macrofab units, so it's a very good idea for Shalka to get that. Although I'm not sure if he's aware of that, he is however out of chrono energy, and it looks like the mech has not built. So apparently he got undermined in the process somewhere, which is a big problem because that means that macrofab is not going to come out, that frigate is not going to come out, and the specials with Com Jam is going to give Shalka kind of a huge opportunity. Although the macrofab. Like I said, it's it looks there, but that's because of the blue time we've carried it. Shalka didn't ultimately build it. There's a fairly certain he didn't. It looks like on the minimap there isn't any, and the Lancers are coming in to attack, and Shalka does not have anything, any macrofabs on his north side of his no buildings on the north side of his base. Which is rather worrisome for him, because the calm jam is gonna be huge. If he doesn't have frigates or MFEs to deal with that, I think defense turrets can deal with it too, but I doubt it. Anyway, if he doesn't have the units to deal with it, which mostly come from the macrofab, he is going to have a very hard time dealing with the Zion Hulking coming in. Really, it's going to be up to Sakhanov to put that Hulking in the right spots before hitting Comjam. 
If he does that, he'll be able to take care of everything. Zion Torture getting attacked and will not last against five Lancers coming in. The Lancers are coming in, going around, and Aerospace is being upgraded for Shalka. So Shalka does have that Aerospace upgrade I was mentioning before. He will be able to deal with ground units far more effectively than he was before that upgrade. Once it's done, it's almost done. It's in progress right now. But once it's done, that will be a huge, huge difference for him. That Those Lancers will do a lot of damage. Zion Hawkin is trying to help out, damage them, attack them. But they are taking... They're still taking damage. They're dealing more damage than they're taking, really. That's on Hakian. However, has Calm Jam, and that will prevent Shalka from doing anything to them. But it also shows that Calm Jam is there. Shalka is now fully aware, or will be if he looks there, that Calm Jam has happened. He is completely aware of this, and now will know to build Mac Krabs, get his frigates up, get Mac MFBs up, just get something to recover those statuses, because that is going to be a big problem if he doesn't. The Zion Torture and Zion Hakan have been sent to the depot to repair. The Zion Torture has been repaired. The Zion Hakan will be repaired soon. Jumping forward a bit, we see that not much has changed in Shalka's base. He has not built a Macrofab yet, but he needs it. Two Zion Hakans are at the 955 mark in the current present. That will be a big problem, though. I think one of them may be building quite soon, and of course one of them already exists. Which means it's up to Sakhanov just to send that Zion Hakan when he wants and jam when he wants, because that Macrofab does not exist. That Macrofab really doesn't exist, and that is going to be... Until Shalka makes it, we're going to have quite effective Calm Jams. So I think Sakhanov, if he can pull out those Calm Jams in the right spots at the right times, and in such a way that Shalka can't deal with it... Aerospace has been finished, by the way. If he can do it in such a way that Shalka can't deal with it, he should be able to win this game. But if he doesn't get it done in time, it doesn't look like he's investing much in anything else. He doesn't have a lot of expansion set up. He doesn't have a lot of other units set up. No air units really set up or anything so he doesn't have much invested in anything other than this calm jam assault so if this works it'll work really well actually he does have a test archer coming up which will be useful against the lancers but he'll need three or four to be effective especially with aerospace up that also upgrades the air attack by the way and lancers lancers are everywhere that's going to be a big deal though shalka like i said he did lose quite a few in the first place if he gets that Macrofab up, that will be the big difference. And Sakhanov, like I said, he isn't really getting everything set up when he needs to. Really, right now and right here would be a great time to have done the Calm Jam. He is, however, focusing more on harassing the expansions, and he is also focused on the present, likely macroing, or at least I hope so, because that's what you should be doing, macroing in the present. And he appears to have actually sent out his Zion Hawkins at about the 9 minute mark, so that will be useful when it comes up. And yes, they are, as seen in the minimap, there's the red blobs jumping around. But they aren't calm jamming. That's the problem. They really need to calm jam everything. Just go into the main base, stick calm jam on everything. You can worry about harassment later. You'll have, you'll have the resources to do it, or at least you have the units to do it, once everything else is calm jammed and nothing can recover it. If you can avoid it being recovered, then you're good. It's golden. But it looks like Sakhanov hasn't really pushed for that yet. He is focusing more on attacking the units in the way. They might just not have been paying attention. He might have not been teleporting away from that. And Vikram is pointing out in the chat, or actually I should say, Crime is pointing out, that no one's expanding in these games, and Vikarin is crying. Because Vikarin pretty much invented expansion in Akron, or at least was the first person to actually use it. Not really invented it, but he certainly has been the first person to really popularize the use of it. Thankfully, thank you Vikarin, for popularizing that expansion. Because I always wanted to have more expansion in Akron. Anyway, back to the game. Importer, the Importer of the South is being attacked! This is what we talked about before, that Importer is being attacked, although... It probably doesn't... Actually, no, 14 reserves. It probably has about 5 reserves in it. Not a huge bottom line for Shalka at this point, but still, that Importer's in a vulnerable spot. I'm very really surprised he actually put it there. Although, it likely won't bite him in the butt. I don't really see that being a big problem. Turn on, two turnouts in the Lancer coming in. Shalka is apparently doing a lot of damage, but I'm sure Stakhanov will jump back and move that. And yes, here we have some Calm Jam. Calm Jam on the Factory and Macrofabs, but... Sorry, Macrofabs. The Armory says Macrofab, but that would be too late. But Armories... However, there is still a Marine at the North Expansion, that's the near expansion to Shaka. And here we have Sahanov has come in and will... No, we can only see right now. But it looks like he is setting up his units to actually attack the Tronauts and Lancers. And Zion Halkin will have to deal with that factory. There's a factory coming in that North Expansion. That could build a mech, that could build a macro that could build a frigate, and then you're done. So Sahanov does not seem to be aware of that North Expansion. He is more focused on the attacks once again. It seems like the best thing to do with the... Zion Hakians is just to jump them around and try to stick Calm Jam on everything. Spread it out as much as possible. Don't really worry too much attacking, especially attacking air. Zion Hawkins are anti-ground units. They have no reason to attack air. By the way, the two importers in the bottom have been destroyed at the 1133 mark, though the red time wave may change this. I highly doubt it. 
The Bird Tower was likely to change, however, the situation in Sakhanov's base. It looks like Sakhanov, according to the minimap, has fixed it, but also the importers have not been destroyed, and the factory is there to the north, so nothing really has improved for Sakhanov. Shalka is in the state he was before that attack, and better, because he also is aware fully of that comm jam, and knows that he has to take care of it. If he doesn't, he's going to lose the game, but if he does, Sakhanov doesn't seem to be investing in much else. He does have more to Aryans. He has Ted Turchers, which is... An interesting investment choice. I would support them with Shin Turchers personally, but on its own, given that there's a lot of Aryans being sent out by Shaka, Ted Turchers are not a bad idea. That being said, they aren't great against ground. So Shaka could easily switch to a ground heavy strategy and there would be very little response. Design Hakians are dying and they are very expensive units. They are not units that you can just throw away. You have to have them alive, you have to save them. And in case you're wondering, I have two monitors, so I have the chat on the other monitor, and the stream on the main screen. This is after you watch the video in order to cast it. The Ted Searchers, there are four Ted Searchers now, that should be enough to take care of the Tornads and Lancers. Only one Lancer and three Tornads. Tornads aren't great against air, so as long as the position is right, the Lancers won't be able to make the difference. But it looks like, now oh, the three Ted Searchers are coming in at a bit of an odd angle. The fourth Ted Searcher is behind them, bringing up the roots support. Getting rid of one of the Lancers is gone. The other Lancer is going to be gone soon. And no, the, oh, that was the only Lancer, right? So the Tornads are going very quickly, but the Ted Searchers kind of came in at an odd angle. I think one of them may end up dying, one of them having three Ted Searchers at the end of that battle. And no, we have four. They actually all survived. One of them barely, but they all survived. Good for them. Tank, however, attacking the RPs that are trying to expand to the south, and it looks like Sakhanov is starting to run low on resources. He's trying to get expansion to the south, to the little south middle expansion that he has his nearest. Definitely out of QP. Well, one box left is likely to be done soon. While Shaka has expanded, started to expand quite a bit around the map now. And this is where I think Shaka is going to make it. Because Stakhanov seemed to have made a rather large mistake on not transitioning away from the Calm Jam strategy when he first did it. Because really, Calm Jam works once. I'm going to be honest, there isn't an awful lot of times where Calm Jam works more than once. Once your opponent knows about it, they can get recovery units, as long as one of those recovery units is live, or, as we see, there's a comm center, if that comm center has Smart Idle on, it doesn't even matter, as long as one of those recovery units is alive at all, even if it is locked up, it'll still break everyone else out of the comm jam. It itself won't break out, but if there's another recovery unit, then it'll break out, and if it breaks out the macro valve, then that can build another frigate, and so on. So, there's really no way that Shalka can do anything wrong at this point, unless it kind of does a complete transition to... Well, let's say like he's going for air. If you want Christian Churchers, that might help for support. Or Zion Pulsers. Though it doesn't really matter. He has very little LC. He has 12 LC, 340 QP. Very lopsided that way. Chrono Porting might... No, Chrono Porting is a bad idea. He shouldn't, he shouldn't go for Gate Tech. He wouldn't have the resources to support at this point. He doesn't have QP to do that. So, Zion Halkin is coming in to try to help out with the anti-ground game. But really, Zion Pulsers would be a better idea in pure anti-ground. Zion Halkin is good. It's very powerful. But the numbers you need in order to deal with this just too expensive. And for that price, you'd have three, maybe four Zion Pulsers. Uh, at least three. And that would be a lot more damage. A lot less health. It'd be easier to stop, but it'd be a lot more damage. And here come the frigates. They're recovering the factories and armories that were locked up. They were locked up at the 1450 mark, and they will be unlocked by the 15 minute mark. And even if that macro gets locked up, and it looks like the frigates actually been locked up. Like I said, Smart Idol is on, as you can see right next to Shaka's name. Smart Idol is on. There's nothing that can be done about it. Smart Idols there, and Frigates will be able to recover everything. So that is going to be, like I said, a valiant effort by Stakhanov, but really not the best transition timing. A transition probably about five minutes too late for the Ted Searchers. And like, it's not a bad idea, but the Ted Searchers would have been very useful earlier on when the Frigates start, not just the Frigates, just any unit started up, allowing the Zion Halkians freer reign around the map because Tornados wouldn't have stopped them, and also Zion Churches freer reign because Tornados are detectors. So now Shaka is definitely pushing for expansion. Sakhanov does not have the resources to support that. He doesn't have enough LC to even build a single RP. And he doesn't have the units to really support. And he focused really heavily again in that south expansion. And then focused on just pushing out. And really focusing. Not so much on Shaka's base. He might have a chance. Might. But I still think it's a bit too late. This is the edge of the unplayable past. And I know Akron being Akron, you can always change things around. But this is the edge of the unplayable past. Nothing can change from here unless Gate Tech is researched, and no one has Gate Tech left. So, now Shalka is going for the nice expansion strategy, but really, I'm surprised Sakhanov did not go for it sooner. Two Zion Holikians would have been good. 
followed by quick transition to Teth Turchers and maybe some Shin Turchers as well, because Zain Halkians, of course, get countered by Frigates, with, which are on even footing with Teth Turchers, although Teth Pulsers might not have been a bad idea either, they are simply slow. Teth Halkians would have been a good idea, though also quite LC heavy. Teth Turchers? No, actually no, sorry. All Teth class units are LC heavy, so that's not really a difference maker. Really, the speed is the big problem. And Frigates and Teth Turchers are going to be roughly on par. So Teth Turchers would have been a great idea about five minutes before he built them. But right now, Sakana's in a very tight spot. I don't know how he's going to plan to get out of this. He doesn't have any LC. He's got to convert that LC, uh, QP into LC at the very least. Like I said, get a couple of Zion Pulsers. That's his only hope is to get a couple of Zion Pulsers and just try to tear down this entire base. And from there, he'll be able to expand to it. But you'll have to work his butt off to protect it because that expansion is going to be very vulnerable. And a Comm Gem as well. Another Comm Gem on the armories and importers. But of course, like I said, Smart Idol is on, which means it's very likely... And why are there Tethers in the top left corner of the map? How long, how long have they been there? Apparently at least 30 seconds. So, those Tethers just should be moving around more often. But Sokhanov is likely out of Chrono Energy. He only has two orders worth at this point. He's getting rid of the armory and importers, trying to just get rid of this base with a Zion Halkin, but it's rather risky since Shalkin can just go back, recover it, and it doesn't really matter. And of course, that base isn't super important. I just think it's the only base that Sakhanov can expand to. So Sakhanov is trying to do roughly what I suggested, although he doesn't have a lot of LC to do it with. He has a lot of QP which isn't being used. And right now he's LC starved. That's oh wait, there he is. He's actually now converting his QP into LC. And by the way, you can stop an RP anywhere to do this. You don't have to stop it right next to a box. You can just stop anywhere. And he is converting to LC, but I don't. Well, he could build a Zion Pulse from here, but really, what he needs. Now, well, Zion Pulses are what he needs. Maybe Zion. Well, no, Zion class would only be Pulsers. Tet Turchers are in the back, and those would be useful. Like, get them into the depot, repair them, have them tear apart the frigates, and then tear apart the Tornados. Stop the harassment on your base. That's the biggest thing that can happen. But right now, Sakhanov is in a position where he basically can't lose any units. For Vekir, this is in a bad position, since depots, you can just teleport to the depot, repair up, maybe 10 seconds, the unit's out of commission, but it's going to stay alive, and you aren't spending any extra money. That's the important thing. But unfortunately, Sakhanov isn't doing that. And incidentally, this is actually how I beat one of the campaign missions. Vector is very good at this resilient thing. And here we are, the Tet Turchers are coming in, they are attacking the comm center. Not sure if it's just because it's the closest thing at the top, or because Sakhanov has realized that the comm center is his biggest weakness right now. The frigates are able to just recover everything and are being attracted to anything that actually is comm jammed. And now the Tet Turchers are returning to the base. They aren't teleporting though. They actually don't have gate they don't have skip teleport upgraded for themselves. They also don't have gate tech, so skip teleport's not being automatically upgraded, but he can get with the depot. And like I said, like this is 20 minutes into the game, and Sakhanov has totally stagnated. And right now, Shalka looks like he's going for the final push right now. There's turrets outside the main base. Tornado's coming from the north. There's, of course, the Frigate and Tornado coming in from the south. They're attacking the RPs and taking care of the Zion Halkin. And really, there's not much Sakhanov can do. He has some resources to deal with this. He has a Tet Surfers that are alive. They did heal up, as I suggested, though still, once again, a couple minutes too late. And really, he doesn't have anything to work with. This... Ted Searcher is in a great spot to heal up because the foundation is there healing it. They don't have to go into the depot to do so. But this tank is going to be a big problem. Tanks are equally powerful against air and ground and they deal quite a bit of damage anyway. Zion Hutkin has also gone back and repaired up. And a Test Pulsar has been built as well, which should help, but it's not going to be enough. Really, there's not enough that Sakhanov can do at this point. I, like I said, it'd be really tough there. Maybe if he just got lucky with the Jams. Maybe he just got lucky with really setting up his units, but looks like he's lost a Teth Turcher already, and another Teth Turcher is going to be going down very soon. And the Teth Pulsar isn't doing much, so Sakana, he has resources now, and now he's just lost the units that he needs to have for support, so... This is huge. Sakana really can't recover from this. That is just bizarre. I, I don't see why Sakana, like I said, shot for this as completely as he did. But yeah, that was an all-in strategy, and very valiant effort trying to stay alive, but he is losing his units fast, he's losing his base fast, and he has no expansion. He has 69 LC, 176 QP, and that's all he's probably ever going to get. Maybe a bit more, but not much. He has fallen apart, and I do not see a way out of this for him. He is he's tenacious, I'll give him that, but he's in a very bad spot. And unfortunately for him, this is game 3, which means, of course, that Shalka winning would put Shalka ahead 
So that is going to be the game. There's not much that I can say that could change that. Sakhanov has has got himself in a position where he pretty much can't win. I'm not going to say they can't win until the GG happens, of course. There's pos the possibility that he has something in up his sleeve, something in mind that I have not thought of. But I don't see it happening. He's trying to, however, calm down the Macrofab, which like I said, is a bit late, but at the very least could distract the frigates. That would be the best thing it could do, is distract the frigates, cause them to get out of his base, and have them just heal up that, or recover up that whole section of the base. It is happening, but I don't see any profit from it. The Teth Pulsar would be doing his best to kill the frigates, not let them go away. He doesn't have a shortage of anti-air units, so I don't see why are relative to the air units that exist. Martank's also coming in, which is going to be a huge problem. That will seal the deal if Stakhanov doesn't just decide, you know what, I'm done. Because Stakhanov is, like I said, in a bad spot. He is doing a valiant effort trying to recover, getting his Teth Pulsar to help expand, and he is actually getting more LC, but he doesn't have a lot of expansions going on, and he doesn't have a lot of units. I'm double-checking it. Frigates were here before, they are moving away. They actually weren't very close to begin with, as you can see. They were a fair ways away from where the Teth Pulsar is, and they weren't helping out, so... Billy almost... If he was trying to lure the Frigates, the better strategy would have been to lure... Although, I probably wasn't thinking of that. Would have been to lure them towards the Teth Pulsar, and have them die to the Teth Pulsar. However, Zion Halkian, Teth Turcher, and Zion Turcher are going to get rid of the Tornado Tank attack from the north that occurred earlier, or at least part of the, that attack. Still, a much larger attack is being built up in Shalka's base. He has the units, he has the factories, he has the macrofab. Although he could use a couple more. If he could, I mean, look at his resources. 400 LC, 600 QP. He could easily build a larger army, but it doesn't matter. The point is, he has he has a large army, he has the stuff to back it up, even if it falls apart. This is not going to work very well for Sakhanov. Although Sakhanov actually is getting more resources, he actually has more QP and LC. I don't see him getting out of this, but I could see him putting up a better Valiant Last Stand with what he has. If he just had... No, I don't know what he could do, though. Like, that combination of units... Like I said, if he got lucky, he it really well using a great combination of... Let's see... Let's figure yeah, Probably Teth Turchers... Teth Turchers... Teth Pulsers, and... Because the Lancers are not bad against ground, so... Teth Turchers, probably some Teth Pulsers, and Zion Pulsers. Sorry, Zion Turchers would be the best solution. And he's trying to go for one Teth Turcher and one Zion Turcher, but it's not enough. Although, admittedly, they are expensive. You'd only build, be able to build one or two of them. So, yeah, that's the thing. Not enough resources to really push this. A Zion Pulser has been built, but it's not going to be able to do too much. It is going to be able to get rid of that. It might be able to get rid of that turret. If the turret upgraded, it, it won't. And I think that might actually be up to check. But that turret is going to be an issue for that Zion Pulsar. And the Frigates, of course, coming in. Not being able to take care of that Zion Turcher, however. But yeah, the turret can hit the Zion Pulsar, so I suspect it may be upgraded. Though I'm a bit surprised. I think because... Yeah, okay, it is upgraded. But Zion Pulsars do have a larger range. They simply don't have a large sight range. As you can see, the sight range is only on the edge of the turret. Its attack range is longer, but... Its sight range is short, so it needs a spotter. It doesn't have it. Zion Hagen is going to the main base trying to... trying to calm jam. There's really no point. The only thing worth calm jamming is the stuff that's attacking him directly right now, and the frigates will be able to recover that anyway. So, I don't really see much point in calm jamming anything right now. Zion Hagen would be much better back in the main base supporting, but like I said, this is hopeless. I'm sorry, this is... Sakana kind of doesn't really have much of a chance right now. He's jumping back to the timeline to figure out what's going on, but I don't really see how he could get out of this. There's... 100, 109, 110, that's one more Pulsar class unit, basically, or one more Turcher class, one Zion Turcher, maybe. That won't be enough. The Zion Hawkin trying to keep going with the expansion, but I don't see it working. The, it's just too late. Gate, having got, if he had gotten Gate Tech early and gotten an expansion, he might have a chance right now, but as it stands, he has a Zion Hawkin and a base that's falling apart. And yes, he's GG. So it kind of has surrendered. That is game three. So, yeah, I know there was no displayed game one or two because the replay didn't come to me in time. But that is game three, so I hope you enjoyed that. That is, of course, the game everyone will be watching anyway, so how about that? So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And that is going to be the second second match of tonight. That is Shaka winning 2-1. to one. So he, I mean, he. it was probably other good games too, so I'm a bit disappointed that I couldn't watch them, because they would have been good games. But as it stands, that was what we had to deal with. So, right, 
Woo. Uh, right now, we have, as I mentioned before, we had first Numbers versus Big Boy, and Numbers won 2 nothing. Then Shaka versus Akana, then Shaka won 2-1. to So next will be Google Frog versus Kevin, and at this point, Haiku versus Kitan appears that Kitan did not show up. So unfortunate, but he did mention he'd be out. I did ask him about it, he didn't get a chance to respond, unfortunately. He mentioned he'd be out of internet for three weeks or so, and I hope this would be in time, but apparently it wasn't. I apologize, but that is, uh, that is unfortunate. Anyway, oh, whoops. Shaka has gotten into... Oh, wait. Anyway, yeah, so Shaka has gotten in. So I will stop the stream now, and we'll be back shortly with the game between... Game 1 between Google Frog and Kevin. I don't have I didn't get the Game 2 replay, so that's going to be just Game 1. And then I'll let you know how it went afterwards. So, be back.